Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. It's Wednesday, March 16th. We had a mixed day in grains. Let's take a look at Grain Hedge's trading platform and see where we closed. In Chicago, corn continuing to be relatively flat, losing only a quarter cent a bushel. Beans up two after being down by as much as six on the day, and wheat losing six and a half cents a bushel in Chicago. Let's take a look at some of the news that was out today. A lot of news in outside markets, but first let's talk about what was going on in ag. First of all, this morning USDA gave us some fresh sales for old crop beans, saying that a 100,000 metric ton deal was done with an unknown destination. That adds on to the bullish news from yesterday, which showed crush numbers for February significantly higher than expected. And although beans was trading down for most of the day, it did manage to close stronger, which I thought was a relatively encouraging sign. Other news out, Egypt bought more wheat, and of course U.S. was out of that deal. Uh, most countries are in fact not bidding aggressively on this because of the ergo restrictions by Egypt right now. Only six countries are bidding on uh, the Egypt deals versus 20 that normally occurs when Egypt puts out a tender. Uh, the day's deal went to France, Romania, and Ukraine. In outside markets, let's talk about what's going on in Brazil. <clears throat> and, you know, there's a lot of political upheaval there with uh, potential uh, fraud and corruption charges being levied against former President Lulu. That uh, is apparently being shuffled under the rug because Lulu is being appointed to a cabinet post by the current president. And so that has sent the Brazilian reel down the last three days. And we were down yesterday as much as 3%, today as much as 3%, although we did recover some of those losses in the Brazilian reel. And so what had been a relatively favorable news event for the U.S. grain export business a week ago when the Brazilian reel rallied 8%, well, we've suddenly sort of uh, turned the corner on that news event. And it's still a lot of turmoil down there, but uh, as for the time being, the Brazilian reel is trading down from its high last week. Other news, EIA's crude stocks number was uh, bullish, coming in below expectations with only a 1 million barrel increase in uh, inventories in the U.S. versus what many had thought would be a 3 million barrel increase in crude stocks. So it does seem like we are starting to see a shift from uh, traders talking about 30 to $20 oil to now talking about 40 maybe $50 oil, but certainly 40 seems to be uh, in the ballpark here as we move higher. And we saw crude rally $2 a, a barrel today. And some of that crude rally was tied to what happened at the Fed. The Fed came out with, not surprising, no change in their interest rate, but what was more interesting was their policy stance going forward. Most people had been believing that they would be looking at three interest rate hikes in 2016. The Fed has come out and said more likely they would have two interest rate hikes and that sent the U.S. dollar scrambling significantly lower. It had been up as much as three-tenths of a percent today uh, and was down as much as eight-tenths of a percent uh, as we finished the day trading session. So that really I think is, is a continued theme that the U.S. dollar is coming down off of its highs that we set back in December and early January. We're off about 4% on the U.S. dollar and many pundits are suggesting that the U.S. dollar will continue to weaken as we go forward, which would be a very positive uh, development for U.S. wheat exports in particular and even U.S. corn exports. Let's take a look at EIA's ethanol numbers. This too was also supportive but didn't do much to react or didn't do much uh, in terms of pushing the corn market and seeing any sort of reaction. We saw production up a whopping 21,000 barrels per day up to the highest point since early January and also uh, supportive was the drawdown in ethanol stocks off nearly half a million barrels uh, on the week. But again, corn continues to sort of stagnate here as we've got up uh, about 10 to 15 cents in the last two weeks of trading. And part of what everyone's been talking about is the record large short position that the funds have. And let's go back to that latest CFTC report, which was based on the position statements as of March 8th. And at that point in time, we had 265,000 combined short positions by, by managed money. And that's about the time when we were seeing corn prices around three, uh, 357 on the board. 
and what we've managed to do since that report came out is basically push this market higher. But what's interesting is, is if you trace through this, you don't see the actual short position move that dramatically. These are based on sort of anecdotal uh, fund designate or fund purchases or sales at the end of the day. So it's not official CFTC data, but if we sort of ballpark it, we can see that we went from about a 265,000 contract short position to today's close somewhere around 245,000. So only shedding about 20,000 contracts in that short position over this 10 cent move since that uh, CFTC data was available. If you go back to the corresponding highs back in uh, February, back in um, I'm sorry, in early February and mid February, so you can see we were around 209,000 uh, contracts at the peak, 236,000 most recently. So, my opinion is we still got more room to run here. I think we have a, a good chance of testing those highs at 273 and trying to push out some more of these short positions. We saw a lot of shorts accumulate in that last run down to get us to that record large short position and we haven't seen much action in terms of them exiting on this move. Will the big drop in the US dollar do it tomorrow? I don't know. We've got export numbers also waiting for us first thing in the morning so stay tuned for that. Follow us on Twitter, at Grain TV is our Twitter handle if you want to see those numbers when they first come out. And as always, visit us online at GrainHedge.com if you're interested in learning more how we can help you in your grain marketing decisions. Grain Hedge is pleased to announce a new tool called Technical Alerts. Technical Alerts is free to our trading clients and delivered by email first thing in the morning every trading day. Technical Alerts is a powerful, easy to use system that provides quality trading opportunities. Each trading opportunity shows a chart and analysis providing clear price targets and risk potential to allow you to make an educated trading decision. The commodities covered include grains, livestock, crude oil, currencies, bonds, and metals. Technical Alerts look at historical chart formations and can Compare the current environment to the past to form concrete trading recommendations. Let's take a look at how to interpret a technical alert. At the top, you will see a red or green indicator arrow which signifies the market's likely move. Red shows when weaker prices are expected and green for when higher prices are expected. The summary section shows the expected price target and the expected duration it should take to reach the target. Also, technical alerts provides both support and resistance to help you identify key levels on the price chart. Underlying support is where technicians believe there is a level of buying interest, while overhead resistance is the price level thought to trigger more active selling. The support is marked with the letter A on the corresponding price chart and resistance is marked with the letter B. Below the chart, you will see the data interval of the bars. For example, a one hour data interval means the chart pattern was constructed from a one hour bar chart. And when you are using the Grain Hedge trading platform, you can use the pull down on your chart to change the bar interval to the appropriate time period. As always, we strive to provide you the best tools to improve your trading and hedging activity. If you have any questions on how to use technical alerts, please contact us at 877-472-4607 or by email at support at grainhedge.com.